controlled burn schedule for Boone County. Plumes of smoke will rise above the northeastern region of Boone County over the better part of next week as part of a forestry service run control burn of overgrown sections of Flintlock National Park. National Forest, rather. Forestry crews have been preparing the area for months. The burn operation will take place between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and possibly on Thursday, depending on the speed of progress according to the Forestry Service. In addition to removing dead and overgrown vegetation, they can lead to wildfires in drier months, as California knows, and the operation will serve as a valuable training tool for the forestry and firefighting personnel involved, says Senior Conservation Janice Greenbrier. Smoke will likely linger in the area through the following weekend. So we're starting to find out stuff about Mrs. Greenbrier. She's not just um, she's not just a person in the uh, forestry service. She's like one of the I wouldn't say the head, but like she's in a senior position, so she has some experience behind her, and it's something she cares deeply about. Also, comb. Personal calendar. Oh, weekly planner. Sorry. What days is this? Ooh, I think that's 994. This says week of. You can't do that. Unless these are just like the other. Gosh, I, I'm going to be honest. I have trouble reading this. So you know what I'm going to do? Thank God I realize this exists. Because now I know what it's like reading my... Oh, that is the wrong one. Because now I know what it's like reading my own handwriting. Monday, couples bowling. Wednesday, class cooking, take apron. Friday, ballroom dancing. Monday, couples bowling. Wednesday, cooking class. Friday, ballroom dancing. Oh, wait, it's just going to... Oh, wait. Ballroom dancing was uh, crossed out on the first one. Still crossed out on the second one. Also, that was a nice reflection there. Couples bowling is also crossed out, so cooking class remains on Wednesday. And then the third one... No, 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 no. No, no, no. Wednesday, cooking class... Um, they need to transcribe this better. Wednesday, cooking class. Friday, ballroom dancing. Cook big meal for Terry and Sam. Alright, I have no idea why that was there. Notice of Temporary Personnel Transfer, Bruce Pendleton, Head of Personnel, Sec State Forestry Service. To aid in the upcoming prescribed burn operation, a ranger with expertise in the procedure is being transferred to the station at Flintlock National Forest, effective 9294. Please see attached personnel file. The overseeing officer at Flintlock Forestry Station, Senior Conservationist Jan Janice Greenbrier, is charged with the supervision of transferred personnel. The duration of transfer will be based upon performance evaluation as well as the recommendation of the overseeing officer. Signed, Bruce Pendleton. So... I'm trying to figure out whether uh, Mrs. Greenbrier works for a state agency or a federal agency. I can't quite tell. Because she's overseeing a national forest forestry thing, but at the same... And she had that... Uh, USDA manual down there but at the same time it sounds like she's part of a state agency I might have to check that ooh cassette tape Bratmobile potty mouth it's it's really awkward that you can't see this as clearly but anyway but anyway it can flip over oh that's just the list of the track names there I don't care about that and in case you're wondering if um you, I'll check Janice's button over there just to verify. But in case you're wondering, no, you can't play this in the cassette player in here. And, um, if you want... Yeah, this is just aesthetic. Partially because it... Yeah, the tape's not actually in there, surprisingly. It's just, like, the cover for it. It's weird hanging out with girls. Daniel was around ever since I was little, and other girls? I don't know. But being around Lonnie is like, instantly just right. I gave her the grand Psycho House tour, and took my revenge on Super Nintendo. 
And it was like, I don't know. I finally found someone I feel normal around. I drove her home and she gave me this tape and said, you have got to listen to this. They haven't stopped playing it since. Sorry, I wasn't expecting dialogue there, but, uh... So, she does work, uh, for... Ca counties tend to be subsidiaries of state agencies, so... Let's just say local agency. Because that, that can encompass both. She does work for a local agency, but I guess it makes sense if they're dealing... If they're, like, part of a state-federal project with a federal forest, with a national forest, then it makes sense that, um, she'd be using USDA. Though again, I be I believe national parks and national forests are handled by uh, Department of the Interior, not USDA. Radiation area, keep out. Sam, are you building nuclear bombs in your room? I thought I heard something. Something really creepy, like a door swinging. Hold on. Let's... Let me fix something real quick. Alright. I don't think we'll need any more cursive reading. Daniel called. Daniel called again. He wants his Nintendo game back. Sam has been keeping it a little too long. Sam, stop leaving every damn light in the house on. You're as bad as your sister. I didn't mean to be attacked. Read sternly worded letter. To whom it may concern, I, Samantha Greenbrier, am 17 years old and then therefore an independent, fully functional human being. The fact that you still forbid me from going into the city on my own is frankly absurd compared with Katie, who is only three three years older than me and yet you allowed her to go on all the way across the, an ocean to another continent on her own i just want to spend an evening in a normal totally safe city on my own like a human being and since you may also remember that i have my own car now you can't really stop me warmest regards your daughter samantha that was certainly sternly worded i honestly one of my favorite things about this game is just the the way they phrase stuff like this is wonderful. Anything else over here? No. So let's walk into Sam's room. It is dark. Who would have thought? Is there a light switch? No, surprisingly. She doesn't have any ceiling lights. That makes me a little uncomfortable. But anyway, I wanted to grab this so I could play it in the background here since we didn't hear it all before. It is sort of necessary for the story. I just sort of put it in at the end downstairs and uh, might as well. And Sam does have a tape player up here.
Is that all for the tape? I think so. Unfortunately, fortunately, you don't need to rewind it. Apparently, uh, Katie does that in her own time. But a couple things I want to bring mention to. In the closet in here, we have uh, an old cat collar. And another chapter. The King's Labyrinth, Chapter 2, Fraying Threads. Captain Allegra, still in her flowing skirt and sturdy jerkin, descended the single shining thread into the lower cavern of the labyrinth. She and her, she and the first mate, on their own now, grew closer to their goal, the throne room of the dead immortal king of the island. The first mate slid down the line onto the stone floor. She swept chalky bone dust from the front of her ca canvas trousers and looked up at Allegra. The silken thread, nigh unbreakable thanks to the enchanted moss that inhabited the island, trailed behind, leading their way back to the entrance. From further into the labyrinth, a moaning began to echo. The moaning grew louder and clearer. It turned into words from some ancient language that could that they could not understand. The king's cursed voice. The hairs on Captain Allegra's arm stood up, stood on end. She looked back at the first mate, whose eyes remained locked on the blackness of the passage from a moment too long before not noticing the captain's gaze. The first mate nodded silently ahead. Following the king's go ghostly song deeper and deeper into the labyrinth, they came upon a rocky gap slip, spilling forward otherworld, sp spilling forth otherworldly blue light. The great basin of the dead king's throne room lay below, skeletal and rotted robes. The king was hunched over the blue orb, to topping his royal scepter. Shadows of his bony fingers danced on the walls like ghouls. As he sang, wailing souls flowed in one by one through the cracks in the cave walls, pulling into the orb, causing it to glow brighter and brighter. Behind the king, a long staircase hewn from rock laid, led down into the chamber from a passage at the top. Allegra said, We have the advantage in numbers. I will draw his attention, and then you... But the first maid interrupted, No, I am smaller and quicker, and you know of dealing with mystic energies like these. I will circle to the other side, get the king's attention, and lead him on a merry chase. She held up the silk line. All, tr all traced by this invisible thread, of course, Allegra said. It is a good plan, but perhaps we should go together. The first mate shook her head. You know this is our best chance. Don't be afraid for me. They grasped hands and exchanged three tight squeezes, their palms growing warmer. The first mate tried tied the shining thread to the belt of her trousers, gave a quick salute and a wink, and dashed off. Allegra waited, staring vigilantly across at the top of the stairs where the first mate was to appear. The king continued his, wait, no, no, the singing stopped. The king turned and began walking up the stairs. Allegra wanted to call out, to do anything to stop the first mate from running headfirst into danger. She tried tugging on the line to signal her, no use. The king was nearly at the top of the stairs when the first mate burst through the passageway. She skidded to a stop. Even from across the yawning basin, Allegra could see the first mate's eyes glowing, right, glowing wide. She turned and ran. Summoning his undead power, the king left the ground, levitating, gliding behind her with a distressing speed. From some dank passage, much too far away, Allegra heard the first mate scream. She was already running towards the sound. The line in Allegra's hand went taut, then shuddered. It fell slack to the stone floor. As Allegra ran, she was gathered. As Allegra ran, she was gathering the line, twisting it around her arm. She came to its end. The unbreakable thread dangled limply. Its end shredded and frayed in her hand. She tossed it to the ground and ran, ran, ran. Another interesting thing I really like about this game is seeing the progression of uh, that same continuous story that Sam's had apparently since 7th grade just developing as she becomes older and becomes more of a better author. Also, these things. These things are supposed to be like these in, these things where you stare at them long enough and you start to see a 3D image. I think they were designed so that they could work in this game, but honestly I wouldn't be able to say. Even in real life I've never been able to under I've never been able to see anything from them. They just always never work for me. Also, we have now we know that Sam plays as Chun Li. As really, if you have two women playing Street Fighter, that's just about guaranteed. One of them will play Chun Li. I always go with Guile personally, but that's also because I'm an American, and I like being a family man. 
Also, there's uh, these fake SNES games here, face Super Nintendo games. Uh, there's something related to these games that I can't remember what. It'll be explained uh, later, though. Also, we have another tape. Found one in here. It is Bratmobile Cool Schmool. So that tape's done. Sam has these celebrities talking to each other, which I don't quite get. Also referring to that cat as Mitten. I think you can get the context clues. Also a Jolly Roger back here for some reason. I think that's, if I'm not mistaken, that's actually the Jolly Roger they use in, the Pir in Pirates of the Caribbean, which is an actual Jolly Roger used by a, some pirate, I can't remember. I'll put it up uh, on screen. If it is actually a real one, well, I'm pretty sure it is. Groove. Biohazard. Oh, oh, I think that's a. I think this is. I think this is a music magazine. Exclusive. AIDS in Africa. Soul Asylum Live. Eddie Vitter. We Weezer. Definitely a music magazine. Baruch Assault wants it now. Maxim Martinez. Martin, whatever. Wanted for the murder of Straight Edge. Oh yeah, that's a punk movement. In case you didn't know, Straight Edge was like a punk movement where, uh, even though they would be traditionally punk, you know, get tattoos and everything, sort of dress in that way. They, I, I never understood why. Even though I'm in agreement with their, even though I'm in agreement with the ends, they just have a philosophy that I don't quite understand. They don't uh, drink or smoke or do any drugs, which is pretty contrary to most of punk, honestly. Most of them are very, uh, have fun as much as you can, whereas they're just like, nah, don't mess up your body that much, even though they get tattoos, but that's beside the point. I don't drink or smoke or do drugs either. I've never, I never have and I never want to, frankly. But, uh, that's why, that's why I was saying that, so you didn't just... I'm moving on. Anyway, Sam also has this poster... No, I, I was just like, oh, she watches the X-Files, uh, she believes in the supernatural, that sort of stuff. However, the thing is, I found this exact poster, since I first played this game, I found this exact poster where I used to work. One of my, uh, well, not one of my co-workers, just someone uh, 
who had their own cubicle there. They had this poster up in their cubicle as well. So I don't know. Since Sam's into the X Files, I don't know if it's like an X Files thing, considering um, considering you know at the beginning it, it has this picture of the ship. You know where it goes. But anyway. Also, she got a C- minus for that assignment. I understand she was being a little sassy with the mom and dad thing. But, like, that was a good thing. I never had a shop class, and I can guarantee you I would have never been able to make a frame like that. Crumbled up paper. Disciplinary referral. Yolanda DeSoto. A senior. Mr. Benchley observed... Miss DeSoto wearing a t-shirt with an unacceptable image on the front. A large beer can labeled Pops Blue Ribbon. Miss DeSoto was sent to the guidance counselor's office. Action taken by faculty. Miss DeSoto was given the option to turn her shirt inside out, change it into a shirt from her gym locker, or be suspended for the rest of the day. Miss DeSoto chose sus suspension. Her father was called, but there was no answer and no answering machine. Miss DeSoto must return this form tomorrow signed by her father. Clearly she did not. Lonnie D. So in case you were wondering uh, who this Lonnie was, now we know her full name. I've never heard of anyone named Yolanda, but whatever. Anything over here that's interesting? Just another button, the Misfits. I suppose I ought to bring it up. These buttons that same has across the place, like Bradmobile, The Misfits, uh, Heavens to Bessie, those are all a certain, a very particular genre from the 90s called, uh, I think it's called Riot Girl, and I have to say, like, Riot Girl, because it's spelled uh, G-R-R-R-R-L. No I, no I, like, gurring as in growling, which is a really cringy name, and uh, it, honestly, if you can hear from the music, it, I, I don't. And as I mentioned before, I don't think it's that good. Particularly the vocals. Those vocals are just atrocious. But I don't have any talent either, so I can't complain that much. But, like, it's supposed to be, like, a combination of, um, sort of a punkish alt-rock sort of thing and feminist vibes with lyrics. Just that sort of... Also, Sam has one of these things. I always loved having that in my room. But, um, it just sort of, that's sort of what it is. It's sort of feminist punk rock. And, um, the problem is I don't, I just don't think, look whose dad is weird, dang. But, uh, I just, it doesn't appeal to me. But it, it's in the game, so I gotta demonstrate it. Whole bunch of weird books here. Frankenstein, Metamorphosis, The Scarlet Pimpernet, War of the Worlds, the Master of Bolantre, Call of the Wild, Treasure Island, The Virginian, Selected Stories and Poems of Edgar Allan Poe, I have that one, The Jungle Book, Ben-Hur, Tom Sawyer, I also have that one somewhere in this room, Oliver Twist, and Emma. Some of those are books I have heard before, other ones I most certainly have not. What's this? Brochure. Sam, I think the creative writing track would be perfect for you. Mrs. Black. Look. Whatever. Summer pre-college program for young scholars. Honestly, considering how she's been writing, that it would make sense for Reed College, one of the nation's most lauded private liberal arts and science institutes is proud to announce it i'm pretty sure reed college isn't real but okay Pr proud to announce its 14th annual summer program for young scholars the program invites students of grades 10 and 11 to attend lectures workshops and discussions covering a wide variety of intellectual pursuits by focusing on small group sessions and close faculty student inter interactions the program encourages young minds to thoroughly explore areas of growth and enrichment as they approach the threshold of higher education the program is divided into distinct tracks by subject matter, but students are encouraged to select sessions from secondary tracks along with that which they are admitted. On-campus housing and meals are provided as part of the program's tuition. Scholarships for the summer program are available based upon merit and need, judged by each student's submitted portfolio and financial documentation. They have anthropology, art, and art history. 
Can you combine those into one? Like, history in general is very different, especially from art, but, okay. Classics, that's a broad category, but hey, my school has a general classics program that encompasses both Roman and uh, Greek origins. And uh, even, like, Egyptian, uh, Mesopotamian, that sort of stuff. Mainly Greco-Roman. English, creative writing, history, humanities, math that's a, a especially a broad term. Mathematics, philosophy, religion, sociology, theater. Beyond the benefits of the program itself, free students from each track will be offered a full scholarship for the first year at Reed. If they decide to attend the university full-time as undergraduate students and are accepted by Reed's admissions board. Educators at student schools have been provided with documentation outlining the specific requirements for each track and processes of submitting portfolios and applications. Students accepted to the program will be notified at the beginning of calendar year 1995. So... Considering what we've seen from Sam's stories, that makes a lot of sense that her teacher will want her to do that. Also, I don't think I ever checked this. Hi, Lonnie. I wrote this in first period and left it in your locker on the way to second. It's what all the cool kids are doing. I've decided. Write me back. Also, here's an idea for something to draw. Two cats on a motorcycle. Hey, this is a good idea. What all the cool kids are actually doing is... Sewing? is sending each other pages on their beepers but we're cooler than them oh my gosh beepers that is such a 90 thing 90s thing as hey arnold will testify but we're cooler than them because uh, guess what they can't put this on a beeper two cats on a motorcycle those I, I i'll admit those are some cute cats your drawing of test was so good that i've added a background to make it even better maybe i should just stick to writing though Oh yeah, that's definitely the same stuff. Haha, uh -huh, I liked it. How did you know uh, they were about to be abducted by aliens? I'm looking at Mr. Fish right now. I feel like he would uh, probably have lots of cats. Also like his secret shame is he watches 90210 religiously. I'll ask him about it after class. He said he doesn't have cats and also that he's never watched 90210. But I could see it in his eyes he was lying. So, obviously, Sam's locker is, in fact, locked. Is that all? I checked this, right? Yes. So, from what we can gather here, it's pretty clear that Sam is in her rebellious phase, considering, and she's hanging out with some rebellious children, considering uh, Lonnie's disciplinary action. And she she's definitely has a certain... Uh, rebel sort of style about her also very clearly she's been talking with sam a whole bunch danger wearing goggles and rubber gloves when handling anything in this room how do you even get those do you like steal them from science class or something Ooh, what what's this hey sam do you want to see pulp fiction after school in the at the coliseum it came out last weekend and Todd won't shut up about it. So either it's really good or we can make fun of him for liking it. My mom is supposed to cook dinner for us? Tonight for a change. But I can't just uh, ditch out on it probably. What time? But I can pro just ditch out on it probably. That's actually very rude I'll be honest. Con considering we saw her mom was planning of this all week. What time? Also isn't that movie supposed to be really violent? Am I going to barf? According to Todd it is pretty hardcore. I guess Uma Thurman gets stabbed in the in the heart with a heroin needle, so that's kind of hilarious. Also, something about cheeseburgers is important. Todd wants to see it again. 7.15, okay? Don't barf. Uh, Alright, see you then. And then a burger barfing. Now we saw that the ticket that they did, in fact, go see Pulp Fiction. I have not seen Pulp Fiction, so I can't testify to what they're actually referring to. Also, this is just going to be a long episode. Actually, I might just cut it off somewhere in here. All right. Ooh. Actually, there's something I want to check out over here. No, I'm going to go through here first. Turn on lights. Who just leaves their purse lying around? I guess women have multiple purses. That could be one of our old ones. Oh, yeah. 
Earth, Wind, and Fire. Quality taste. Quality taste. April 22nd. They really like that date. That's the second time it's shown up. Oh, an Earth Day celebration. Makes sense for the environmentalist to be into Earth, Wind, and Fire. Another postcard from Katie. Dear Mom, Dad, and Sam, I'm in the channel. I'll never get over that name. It's so stupid. This is my second passage through the channel. I'm on my way back from London, this time going to Brussels, Belgium. Sorry I didn't write you on the way to London, but I was too excited about the channel. London was great. Dad, I know you've always wanted to visit, and I think you really should. You'd love it. If you all want to come back here as a family sometime, I guess I could be convinced. Love you all, Katie. That one surprisingly wasn't dated, I don't think. No. No, surprising. I doubt there's anything over this phone. Yep. Open the drawer. What's in here? A Bible. And... Unknown dimension. Literature. Communication must become total and unconscious before it can before we can stop it. That seems like a a cultish sort of publisher. So I don't know what Terry's doing. So what's over here? Clothes, clothes. The only thing is I don't understand why um, Janus. This is clearly Janus' side of the room, judging by the. Um, bras and uh, at least I assume and the um, po the earth wind and fire poster that doesn't explain why um, why uh, a uh, business card for Terry would be in here this is why you don't dig around your parents stuff also, all the drawers fit back in. That's nice. Ooh, more VHSs. Butch Cassidy, The Sundance Kid, The Fugitive, All the res All the President's Men. Are there... Oh, this must be uh, Janice's tapes. Jeopardy. Uncle Harvey? Nice. That's the second time he's been brought up. I didn't know that. The Sound of Music? Yeah, that's definitely Janice's. Also, their tape player is also gone, along with the Super Nintendo. Silence of the Lambs. That seems to be a different person, though, either that or just running out of Sharpie. Close the armoire. Anything in here? Oh, no, this is Janice's. Sorry, I was wrong. That's, uh... I guess he can also be into Earth, Wind, and Fire. Not that unuseful. They have to have some similar interests, interests, I assume, if they're married. Unfortunately, you can't shove that drawer back in. You can't just push it in there, which really bothers me, because, like, it's just sitting right there, out in the open. Aw, oh, Mitten. Mitten, our cat. Caitlin, age five. My sister has very similar drawings of this, except we didn't have a cat back then. We had a dog. She, instead, she drew an imaginary cat into our family. Family photo. That's cute. Ooh, spicy letter. Now, what's under here? Actually, was there anything up on the other side of the bed that I might see? I want to make sure I see everything. Yeah, nothing. Hmm. Hold on a moment. Dear Jan, honey, let me tell you. I understand how you feel. Bob and I have been down, have had our down periods. It's become a bit of a way of life, actually. You get used to each other. You live your own lives in the same house. The kids grow up. They go away. I'm sorry, this isn't helping, is it? Don't worry. Terry will get over whatever's distracting him. Things will go back to normal. As for Sam being so distant, that's a teenager. That's a teenager for you. Nothing to worry about. 
In the meantime, though, this control burn, that sounds like quite the adventure. But let's cut to the chase. This new ranger they sent, that's what I want to hear about. Ranger Rick, you have to be kidding me. It's too perfect. You have to tell me everything. And send pictures. I want the whole package. Wait, that sounded wrong. Keep your chin up until Terry is out of his slump. And in the meantime, write more letters to your old friend Carol. She adores them. So what is this about a ranger Rick? Oh, wall woodman. Leaves of grass. Definitely a curious set of poems. Now, more importantly, what's this? Timberline booksellers. Have your time. I'm glad to have it in good hands. Rick. Take your time. I'm glad to have it in good hands. I guess I could have written the, read the thing that was on screen, but I didn't. Anything in here? Just painting. Oops. Anything up here? Doesn't look like it. What about in here? This is the bathroom. No, can't even open up those down there, surprisingly. Alright, in here. I thought I could I could pick that up. Oh well. No, this is what I could pick up. Can you turn on oh you can turn on the tub. It doesn't fill up though. Ugh. Why did she say ugh? Rediscovering your spouse, personally, spiritually, sexually. Let's just slow close that up and uh, never mention it again.